Blog Talk Radio. Paranormal Review Radio. without commercials and with more great paranormal talk. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Anthony Agati in New York. And I'm Lucy Liebfried in Chicago. Put the kids in bed and get comfy because you're about to have a paranormal Friday night. Welcome friends, family, fellow investigators, and those who are new to the field. Do you have a question to ask us or a story to tell? Well, don't worry. You have two ways to be heard. Call into the show and be on air live by dialing 661-244-9831. Press the number 1 to get your call in queue, or you can type your questions in the chat room. Anthony and I will refer to them during the show. And if you're listening on the archives or on YouTube, well, make sure you get here on Friday nights live. And when you're not listening to us, you can check out our Facebook page and YouTube channel for some cool articles video, show highlights, and promotions. And if that's not enough, you can always drop us a line at paranormal.review at AOL.com. Okay, kids, it's time for Paranormal Review Radio. So tonight is going to be a little bit different for us. We are going to try and accomplish something that we have never done before, uh, we have normally have done investigations and we've done broad, live broadcasts from said locations when we investigate, but this is a little bit different. We're actually in our own hometowns. Lucy is in Chicago and I am in New York. And we thought, what better way since, you know, the frigid cold, we can't really investigate abandoned places, uh, why don't we try and put on a little bit of a investigation of our own in our own hometowns. So we came up with the idea of trying to figure out something interesting. Who would we be interested in talking to? And um, we went through the gamut of names and lists (laughs) to go through. But, um, you know, one of the things that popped out when uh, we were doing uh, the investigation for tonight was that Uh, Upon going over Jeffrey Dahmer, who we're going to try and talk to tonight, and hopefully maybe some of his victims will come through if possible, but uh, as we were doing the research for Jeffrey Dahmer, we came across an interesting fact, and the fact that today, January 16th, marks a special date in Jeffrey Dahmer's history. It is the anniversary of his, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe his third victim, let me see if I get his name, his third victim, James Dockstatter. And James Dockstatter was killed and murdered on January 16th. And he was only 14 years old. This boy was a Native American uh, man and uh, was picked up by Jeffrey Dahmer back in uh, the late 80s. So we thought, you know what, since it is the anniversary of this poor gentleman's death, let's see if we can maybe possibly give him a, a place to speak, give him a platform to talk and let everybody know what his thoughts or his words are. So we're going to try and specifically reach out to James Dockstatter and, um, during the course of the night, but as well as focusing on Jeffrey Dahmer and trying to figure out you know, what was going on in his mind. And maybe he can give us some clues to see if we actually 
are talking to him. And we've got a whole bunch of tools and equipment that we're going to use, and we'll get into that a little bit later and let you know what we're going to be utilizing for tonight's session. But um, we wanted to get into just a little bit of the history of Jeffrey Dahmer and the story of uh, his life and, and of his activity that had went on for a period of almost 10 years consistently, or nine, nine or 10 years consistently. So, um, Lucy, where do you want to start with, uh, with the life of Jeffrey Dahmer? Well, uh, here we go. Let's go with basically where he was born. And let me get to my notes here. Where he was born and what his family life was. I mean, he was born in Milwaukee on May 21st, 1960. His parents were Lionel and Joyce. He had a brother named David. He also had a dog named Frisky. Um, at age six, he suffered a double hernia and had to go into the hospital. Um, always seemed to be a normal kid, but everything that I read said that once he went into the hospital and had the surgery for the hernia, his his personality started to change. He started right. to become like a loner. He started to withdraw. Um, there was an interesting story. Um, 1967, he made a friend named Lee, and he gave he had given some tadpoles. He was always interested in animals, and he gave the tadpoles to the teacher. Well, the teacher ended up giving the tadpoles to this friend, Lee, and Jeffrey found out about that. Jeffrey ended up going into um, the area where the tadpoles were in uh, Lee's home and killed them. This was the first that where he started becoming fascinated with dead animals, um, doing things like stripping fresh flesh from the bone, um, he actually put a dog's head on a spike. Um, he like Vlad was Vlad the Impaler. Yeah, yeah. Um, as he grew older, you know, he still withdrew. He actually became a alcoholic, and during his college years, um, he pretty much was drunk most of the time. He flunked out in 1978. In 1979, his dad made him join the army. And once he went into the army, he seemed to he seemed to do well. I mean, he was fine. Um, but in 1989, he was arrested for child molestation. Um, in 1994, he was actually baptized in the Christian faith after he was arrested. Um, Jeffrey pretty much killed 17 men. He cannibalized the human remains. He sexually violated the dead. Um, he actually confessed to these crimes, and authorities kind of placed him as a sociopath, said that he wasn't really insane, that he was really, all everything that he did was very calculated, very planned out, that he was well aware of what he had been doing. So... When you look back on all of the murders that have happened and everything that he did, I mean, it, when you first look at it, I mean, it does seem to be insanity. I mean, how does a human being in the right mind do something like this? But according to the authorities, the people that studied him, the people that, you know, he was arrested with, they seem to think that Jeffrey was well aware of what he was doing. He had separation issues. Um, by being a loner, he didn't really have close relationships. A lot of these murders, they all revolved around his sexual fantasies. Um, pretty much he had this issue where he didn't want to be left. And part of what he was doing in murdering these poor, poor men was the fact that he did not want them to leave him. You know, I, I've watched uh, <coughs> several different documentaries, and I've actually watched the ABC News interview that they did with him uh, back in the, I believe it was in the early 90s, um, right before his death, that uh, he he was asked the question, why did you do this? Why did you 
um, molest and uh, sexually rape and kill uh, and cannibalize your victims. And he did not have an answer. There was no real answer. He didn't know why he did it. He was just compelled to do it. And uh, it's not a real answer, and it doesn't really get into the, his mind as to why. I don't think I think he's uh, was in denial um, because ultimately he was um, uh, murdered in jail by a, another inmate. So um, that's sort of a good synopsis of of his life and 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 what he did. There are some uh, specific stories that I had learned about in the mix and in the middle of all of this. There were some techniques. You know, obviously, I'll pick out the morbid stuff, and and I'll mm. I'll I'll talk about that side of things. But um, there were there were techniques that he utilized that um, just to understand how calculated he was. He um, actually what he wanted to do was in, in an effort for uh, his victims to not leave, but he did not want to kill his victims. Um, the only reason why, and he admitted to this, that the only reason why he killed his victim was because he did not want them to go to the police and uh, uh, for him to be, you know, sort of outed and, and arrested. So what he tried to do to alleviate the pressure of murder, what he would try to do is drill and he would bore holes in his victim's heads. And... Uh, I don't know where he learned this from or how he got this information, but he tr what he tried to do is create a zombie-like effect in his victims. And so he would take a regular drill that you have in your tool shed or your garage and drill a tiny hole or a couple of tiny holes in his victims' heads and would pour uh, hydrochloric acid into the brain. And it was typically in the frontal lobe of the head. And he had stated that it was to create this sort of um, coma-like state in his victims so that they would still be breathing, still be living, heart still be pumping, lungs still be functioning, but they would not be awake and not be aware of anything going on. And so that he could keep his victims, you know, in his bedroom for long periods of time and do whatever he wanted to do with them, sexually, basically. And so uh, he he typically would utilize that partic particular type of action uh, and found out that it wasn't really working out very well for him. And so he ended up having to kill uh, his victim. Some, one of the victims, actually, um, who was uh, privy enough to try and escape, had these holes bored in his head, I believe, uh, tried to escape, was found by two women who were on the street, uh, they called the cops. The cops came, and funny enough, Jeffrey Dahmer is coming back from the grocery store and saw this happening and uh, told the cops that he was his friend. He was just drunk, and he didn't know his way around because the boy was not talking uh, because he had this hydrochloric acid on his brain. He was able to move, but he wasn't able to think or talk. And so the cops brought him back to Jeffrey Dahmer's house, his apartment, and uh, the cops left. And as soon as the cops left, he realized that this victim was just too awake or more, than, more of, a, of, of an awakeness than he wanted to and did not want to go into having to put more acid into his brain and uh, killed him at that moment right after the cops left. Very sick and twisted guy. Um, he, on several occasions towards the end of this stint of his murdering spree, sick, twisted murdering spree, he also would eat his victims, and he uh, savored pieces of the, the the body itself. He would dismember and um, actually pulverize the bones, discard all of the other body parts, um, except the heads. And I'm getting a little bit morbid, but I just want everybody to... to understand what this man did. Um, but he would take pieces of the body, the flesh, also some organs, and he would, like he was going to a grocery store, he would put them in Ziploc bags, label them, date them, put them in his freezer, and when he was hungry, he'd take it out, put it in a frying pan, and there were accounts that I've heard 
from other officers and police and detectives that were on the case that he would, and he confessed to this, that he would take it out, put it in a frying pan with some oil and onions and carrots and celery and make his, his dinner. And the police and detectives, um, when they raided his house on the last occasion when he was arrested, they said that he had an, enough body parts in his freezer that that was basically all he was living on was eating the flesh and the organs of the dead murdering victims that he had. And that was basically what he was living on. So th that's the, 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 the sick and twisted of it all, and, and that is who we are going to try and reach out to tonight. Um, we have a list of all of the victims' names and the dates uh, that they were murdered. Uh, so we're going to try and call out to them as well. We want to give them a voice and a platform to speak. Um, but we also want to question Jeffrey Dahmer and try and see if we can maybe get a little bit closer than what the cops and the police and detectives uh, try to do and the psychologists and, and all the doctors that were trying to talk to him, try and get maybe some answers. We have some actually specific questions to ask him based on the history and things that he has said himself and uh, want to question him on it. First to see if, you know, it's him, it's actually Jeffrey that we're talking to, but also to see if we get the appropriate answers and, and then ask him a little bit more probing questions as to why uh, why he did it and, and uh, what does he have to say about it and see if we can capture any sounds or who knows, maybe even some full sentences or embodied, uh, disembodied voices. So um, was there anything that you wanted to add, Lucy, about his history or about the victims or about the, the incidents that happened before we get into uh, talking about the equipment that we're going to use tonight? Well, basically, you know, everything that I read about his history, I mean, he comes from his father. His parents were intelligent. His father was educated. Um, he just seemed like any young man that, you know, just ends up. There wasn't that much that was unusual about him until he actually, like, moved in with his grandmother. When he moved in with his grandmother, um, it's pretty much he had discovered that he was homosexual early on in life. And um, his grandmother noticed that he had a habit of picking up guys and bring them to the house. And at one point she told him she didn't want that anymore, that he had to leave. Once he left, that's when he got the apartment in Milwaukee where all of this started. Um, the victims, the victims that he ended up killing just unfortunately just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. They dealt with the wrong person. Um, a lot of them were young. Uh, a lot of them were were no way deserved what happened to them. Um, the young man that you were talking about, the, the, the oh God, what's his name? Uh, James he, Jack Huxtater? No, the other, uh, the other kid that um, let me go here. The other kid that actually was able to escape. His oh, is no, probably the you, most. He didn't escape. You're talking about the one that escaped and went back? Yeah. The, and the was cop, killed? Yeah. The, he actually did get out. He was conscious enough to get out. He had no clothes on. The cops picked him up. Jeffrey smooth was obviously a smooth talker. Um, convinced the cops that it was a lover's tiff that they were just fighting. The cops brought him back. The women that had seen the, the boy and were upset about it were, were questioning this, but the cops had told them that it was a domestic dispute and they didn't want to get involved. So this poor kid was brought back into the apartment with Jeffrey where he probably could have gotten away if they just would have taken him and taken him away from there. So... Uh, you know, when you go over the list of, of victims, they're, it's just really sad and scary because you got one guy that was a father of three kids. You got uh, these young boys, um, James Doxeter. Um, it is reported that he was a, a, a prostitute, but 
Uh, there's other reports that he really wasn't. He was just, one article put it where he was discovering his sexuality and really was an experience that he would hang around outside a gay bar looking for a partner, and it just so happened to be his bad luck that he was convinced by Jeffrey to come back to his apartment to pose for nude photos. Um, it seems like a lot of the, the way that Jeffrey got these these guys to come back, what he would offer them money, you know, um, to come and pose, come and pose for pictures. So uh, one was a runaway, you know, others were, they were just normal everyday people that just happened to be in the wrong place in the wrong time. Um, the cops, they do say that a lot of them participated in high-risk lifestyles, but it still doesn't justify what happened to every single one of them. It really doesn't. And the last victim, Tracy Edwards, uh, well, he wasn't a victim. He, he, uh, uh, there was an attempt on his life by Jeffrey Dahmer, and he is the one that escaped completely and went to the cops, and, and that's when Jeffrey Dahmer was arrested. So, and that was uh, in July of 1991. So, um, so that is Jeffrey Dahmer in a nutshell. I uh, just wanted to give you a little bit of a brief history so that when we try and speak to him tonight, you may be able to catch some things that come through uh, that may be relevant to the story, to his life. There may be some things, and we're going to repeat these again uh, as we go through based on the questions that we have. Like I said, they're going to be specific enough, and uh, we'll let you know, you know what the possible answer is that we're going to try and see if we can hear, so that it will help you listen. Now, one of the things that I did want to mention to everybody tonight is that if you are listening on your phone or if you are listening on your laptop or your computer, that if you have headphones, I would suggest putting on your headphones to listen so that you can negate all of the outside and environmental noise that is within your home or your car or wherever you are right now, if you can put on headphones, great. You'll be able to hear a lot better and pick up on, on the uh, the sessions that we'll have. You can always go back t for tonight's show. You can always b go back and listen on the archive. Uh, you can just click on the same link that you clicked on tonight to listen to it again. You can even download it if you want and listen to it at your leisure and pick it apart if you'd like and become a paranormal investigator and try and listen to see if you hear anything that we may not have picked up on. We're going to do the same thing as well, but you go right ahead and do that uh, to your liking and uh, let us know what you guys hear. During the course of the night also, too, the chat room is here. It's open. Uh, you are more than welcome to type in chat. If you hear anything, if you're sensing anything, if you're feeling anything, let us know because we will be reading chat and we will pick up on whatever you guys are typing out there and we will repeat it possibly in the questions or we may go further in that direction if you're hearing something or if you're feeling anything. So don't be afraid to do that tonight. Uh, the other thing that I did also want to mention is that since we are dealing with spirits, there, there is a possibility that anything can happen. Anything can happen tonight. And so just because you are home in England or in Texas or, or in California, wherever you are at right now, um, does not mean that nothing can affect you because spirits are just not contained to the four sides of the wall that we are in right now or in the, the, the city that we live in, both Lucy and I. So it could be that these spirits can come through. And so we want to make sure that you understand that, uh, that you're well aware of that. Um, I won't be offended, and Lucy won't be offended if you turn off the station right now. Um, but if you are willing to listen, uh, we, the only thing that we ask is that you uh, protect yourself. You can uh, say the St. Michael prayer yourself. You can um, envision white light around you to hopefully protect you from any negative spirits. Try and eliminate any negativity in your mind at this moment moving forward if you are going to listen because negativity attracts negativity. So if you are thinking negative thoughts or if you are feeling negativity yourself, if you're in a bad mood, if you're depressed, if you're angry or upset, uh, try and, and 
alleviate that somehow. If there's a way that you can do that and, and clear your mind, because we want to make sure that you are not a sponge and you are not absorbing anything on your end by just listening to this program tonight. So we want to caution you. We want to give that warning out because, um, and hopefully everybody is over 18 that's listening right now. So uh, we just want to make sure that you guys are protected and well aware of uh, the circumstances of what could possibly happen. If you feel as though that you are not feeling right or things are getting a little bit weird around you by listening to the show tonight, by all means, shut this off. But before you do and before you move on for the rest of your night or your weekend, do a binding. And simply all you have to do for the simplest of form is just say, I do not want any negative spirits around me. Uh, I bind any negative spirits that have come in contact with me to leave. Leave my home, leave my body, leave my mind. That is all you have to really do. There's other rituals and there's other sayings and prayers that people do. Uh, but that is the most basic of one, and you say that with such um, such strength and uh, uh, a conformity in, in your sound, in your voice, that you are demanding it to happen. So if you do tend to leave the, the station tonight or the show tonight, uh, please make sure that you do that so that uh, nothing stays with you moving forward. Okay, so with all of those formalities out of the way, Lucy, why don't you... I do have you... a prayer that I'd like to read. Okay, do you want to do that now, or do you want to just go into yeah. talking about... Oh, let's, okay. let's, let's do the prayer first before... Go. And just keep in mind, everybody, that even though that we're specifically reaching out to Jeffrey, um, you know, there's spirits all around. If we get come in contact with somebody else, mm -hmm. we'll definitely try to find out who they are. But just keep in mind while you're listening that while we're calling out to one person in particular, you, we can make contact with almost anyone or anything. So that's one thing I want you guys to remember. But I just want to read this one prayer, and this is for everybody, everybody within the sound of my voice. And may we be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. St. Michael the Archangel shall defend us and be our protection against all evil and negativity on all levels. May the divine light of the Archangels and all the ascended masters surround us with their love. We call on Metatron and all ask that all negative thought forms, lost souls, negative residues, negative elementals and fragments be permanently healed and taken into the light, that they may be freed according to the highest will of God. May we be purified and blessed upon every level of our being in the work that we do and be given more divine power and protection. Thy will be done. Thank you and amen. Okay. Okay. I feel better. All right. So... Why don't you talk about what uh, you have on your end? And again, just to reiterate again, Lucy is in Chicago and I am in New York. We are not together. I do see her on Skype, and um, uh, that is the only connection that we have together. So uh, let us know, Lucy, what you have on your end for tonight's sessions. Basically, I have my spirit box, my SP7. I've got my uh, digital audio recorder, and I have... Um, my uh, other phone. So I'm going to be using my home phone to get the output from the SB7 because we did we did test it a little bit and we tried with the speaker and the speaker is just way too loud and too muffled. So by using the home phone, we should be able to hear anything that comes out. And just in case somebody is new to this field and doesn't understand what an SB7 is, it is a, uh, a – why don't you explain what it is? An SB7 is basically an AM-FM radio, and it's been modified to where the frequency sweeps back and forth, where you get, like, white noise. And the theory is, is that through the white noise, if there are spirits around, that they can communicate with you, you can hear voices – um, it quickly goes through all of the stations, so you don't really hear the stations. Now, some people do say that you can get interference. You can pick up, you know, phrases or words from the uh, stations that it's sweeping. Um, for me personally, I've had some really good success with the SB7. I know there are people out there that don't really feel that it's all that great. Um, it can be annoying at times, so be aware, too, that, when you hear the white noise going back and forth, it 
it it is kind of it can be annoying at times. But the thing is, with the SB7, you just kind of have to, like, if you clear your mind and you just allow whoever is communicating with you, you can respond. Sometimes you'll get the response back. Sometimes you'll get a full full uh, sentence. Sometimes you'll only get a word or two. But I I like using the SB7. I, 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 think, it, I think it's a great tool, and that's my tool of choice tonight. All right, and what you have to do is, for all those that are listening, uh, as Lucy said, you're going to hear some of the interference of the stations breaking through, obviously, because it is uh, quickly scanning through all of the uh, radio stations in her area, in her town. Um, what you want to do is you want to listen to any voices that are coming through that are longer or expand over longer than, I believe it is, one and a half seconds because that's how quick each station is coming up. It's coming up in 1.5 second in intervals. And so therefore, usually what you would hear is an ah, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ah type of sound. Sometimes you'll get a little bit longer. Uh, it all depends on how well this SB7 works all the time. But you want to you wanna listen to voices that are coming in longer than either a 1.5, 1.5 or th to three second long intervals. If you can hear any voices, let us know. We'll try and also repeat them as well as we hear them. Lucy, just keep a pad and pen next to you so that when anything mm -hmm. does come up, you write it down, and then we can refer to it um, afterwards or during the session as well uh, so we can keep a track record of the names or words or whatever is coming through on that. Okay, so okay. Lucy has her digital recorder and her ghost box, um, her SB7. What I have here in New York is, um, and by the way, I'm actually uh, video recording all of me right now so that uh, if anything does happen during, during the, the course of this, I'm going to post the video and the parts that come through. Uh, we'll put that on our, our Facebook page, Paranormal Review Radio. Uh, so besides the video camera that I have, I have my REM pod, which I have right here next to me. And I'm going to turn it on so you can hear it. Everybody knows what that pretty much looks like. Uh, if any, it, 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 the, it, it is affected by the electromagnetic field or the surroundings of the environment. And if anything comes in contact, you're going to hear this noise. If that comes through, I'll make a comment. I'll talk about it. That means that whatever we are calling upon is near us. I also have my Avalus 3 by Digital Dowsing. It is uh, probably everybody has seen this on Ghost Adventures. Uh, it is a more advanced K2 meter, basically. And what it will do is pick up or manipulate the energy that is in the field or in, in the magnetic field right now, pick up that energy and translate it into a, a communication, a sound, and particularly words. So I'm going to turn this on now. And I have it in the dictionary mode. Basically, it's just going to have the words pop up. I've got flashing lights that come on on the top of this. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to set this, side, set this on the side right now by me. And so if anything comes through, I will uh, be able to hear the, uh, the words that come through. And again, I'm going to write them down. But they do print up here on the screen, so I'll be able to see it as well. Sometimes it prints and sometimes it doesn't type up on here. Uh, it's a little bit funny. The uh, other piece that I have is fairly new that I just recently picked up, which is a trigger object. It's a uh, teddy bear trigger object called a boo bear. Um, you can probably just Google that and check out what boo bear is. And basically, fact. Ovilus 3 just said fact. Eat. Hold on. <laughs> That's fact and eat. Hold on. Wait a minute. Fact. Fact and eat. Okay, we're starting off really good. Um, That's what we're talking about. The uh, the last piece of equipment that I have is the boo bear, as I was just talking about. And uh, again, it's it's a um, more I guess. 
not more advanced, but it's a K2 meter. It's a uh, it's almost like a REM pod also too. And um, what it does, it's you know, it's in the shape of a teddy bear. And what it will also do is um, speak, and it's going to ask questions uh, as well. So you're going to hear this thing in the background, but I'm going to turn it on. It may get a little bit annoying for me, and I may shut it off at some point. But I'm going to turn it on, and it, it detects temperature. So if there's a change in the temperature, it will um, – light up for me and it will actually make a it all the, the teddy bear will talk and say oh it's getting warm in here or oh it's getting cold in here uh it'll tell me with the change in the temperature uh also too it'll that the teddy bear will also tell me if an energy is touching this teddy bear and what will happen is and you'll hear it, it it'll sort of giggle and it'll say i like to be touched like that so um which is kind of weird that we're doing that for Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna turn this on right now. Just get this on. Should I turn it on? No. Oh, I gotta put the other battery in it. Sorry. Okay. Well, I started my recorder at 9:52, so everything's being recorded right now. Okay. Let me just turn this on, sorry. It makes a long noise sound. Let's see if I can get this thing to talk. I'm shaking the teddy bear right now just to see if I can get this thing to talk. All right, so it's not talking. I'm going to set it as... It was talking before... The REM pod just went off. Hi, I'm Boo Buddy. What's your name? Okay, that's just is you know trying to talk and trying to get questions out there. Um, okay, so <laughs> that's what I have right now. I have my Avalis three, my REM pod, and this Boo Bear, which I'm not sure how long it's going to be staying up. I may take it down. Uh, the Avalis three has already told us fact and eat. Maybe it's a fact that he did eat his victims. I don't know. Um, before tonight's show, also too, I don't know about Lucy, but I know I was uh, calling out for Jeffrey Dahmer. I was calling out his name, saying to him, we're, we're going to talk to you tonight. We're, you know, we want you to come. That's the teddy bear talking, sorry, if you can hear that. Um, and I've been calling out his name, calling out for him to come, and so just trying to amp up everything uh, in my surrounding. So, um, okay, Lucy, why don't we, why don't you, I'm going to have you not do, we're not going to do the ghost box session just yet. I want you okay. to call out for Jeffrey Dahmer. If you'd like to reiterate something about Jeffrey or if you want to call out to his victims and, and you know, pronounce the names and, and say the names and say that you call out. Okay, this teddy bear is annoying me already now. It keeps interrupting me. I'm going to shut it off. Sorry, guys. Um, try and see if you can call out for, for him or, or the victims. Let's just see if we can get them to come in this direction. Okay. I am calling out to Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey, if you can hear my voice, if you are around, if you are listening, please, we would like to talk to you. We would like to communicate with you. In addition to Jeffrey, Stephen Hicks, Stephen Tuami, James Doxter, Richard Guerrero, Anthony Sears, Raymond Smith, Eddie Smith, Ernest Miller, David Thomas, Curtis Strop. Strotter, Errol Lindsay, Tony Hughes, Conorak Smith Somathon, Matt Turner, Jeremiah Wing Weinberger, Oliver Lacey, Joseph Brad Holt. I am calling out to any one of you. We want to give you the opportunity to speak and to let us know that you're okay. 
We're doing this in order to give you a voice. We mean no harm. We just want to get some answers. If there's anyone here, please let us know. I want to call out to specifically Jeffrey Dahmer. I know you can hear my voice. I know you can move around. I know you can come in my direction. I want you to come to my home, to me, or I want you to take a visit to Lucy. We have some pieces of equipment that will allow us to hear you. We are going to have some questions for you tonight that we want you to answer. Come on, Jeffrey. Yes. Are you still alone? No matter what you did, you were still alone. How do you feel about that? Do you have any remorse? Jeffrey Are Dahmer. You sorry. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. I call upon Jeffrey Dahmer to speak to us tonight. Speak to Lucy and me. Uh, did you feel anything, Lucy? Any difference? The hair standing up on the top of my head. It started before the show started. All right, but nothing as we were calling him. Do you feel anything around no. you, or no? And I know you no. have you have some specific spirits that sort of like to play around in your house. So mm -hmm. we're going to try and see if we can determine whether or not it's that or if it's Jeffrey. But uh, I, I call upon Jeffrey Dahmer. I can keep saying his name. I'm going to keep saying your name, Jeffrey. Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer. I call upon you to speak to us. I'm going to call on anyone that can hear my voice. Do you know of the person that we're speaking of? Do you know of Jeffrey Dahmer? We're not here to judge you. We're here to ask questions. Today's date is January 16th. And one of your victims, his name's James Dockstatter. You killed James on January 16th. Tonight is the anniversary of James' death and of his murder. You murdered him. We're not going to hurt you. We're not going to do anything bad or negative to you. We just want to talk. Jamie, are you here? Please talk to me. Does the name Club 219 mean anything to you? All right. 
why don't you start the uh, SB7 ghost box session now? Okay. Now, I just want to make sure, this may take a little bit of time, guys who are listening, guys and gals who are listening right now. Um, Lucy, Lucy, you hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right, I just want to make sure now you have your phone, uh, your your other phone attached to the I SB7, have, right? Yeah, and I'm going to All mute right. myself on the cell phone. So the only thing you're going to hear is the um, spirit box. No, I want to make sure that I hear your voice. Well, we're getting something. Don't mute yourself. I want to make sure that I hear your voice, Lucy. Okay. Can you hear the spirit box? No, put it louder. Or put it close to the phone. Can everybody hear that? Everybody in chat, if you're able to type in, can you hear the spirit box? Okay. All right. Everybody can hear it. All right. So, Lucy, why don't you try and ask one question? And let's just wait and see if we can hear an answer. A specific question. I'm looking for Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeff, can you hear me? Can you respond? Jeffrey, what's today, what is today's date? is in chat is saying that she heard it's Dahmer and Elaine is also saying that she heard let's go I hear several voices on this Lisa I don't hear you I need you to stay away from the, the spirit box okay. you're, you're talking on your headphone right your headset? Yeah. yeah. Stay away from the spirit box. Can you still make out the sounds and let us know if you hear anything, Lucy? I got the headphones on, so it's kind of hard to hear the sounds from the... Take one ear off. There you okay. go. Okay. Ask another question. Jeffrey Dahmer, are you there? Jamie. Hello. Who is that? Did they just say hello? Someone said hello. All right, so you gotta, you gotta be the, the announcer of that. If you hear somebody saying something, say they, it just said hello or it just said whatever, okay. just so that we can make it out. Ask us a, a specific question. Jamie, are you there? What is your mother's name?
I heard let's go again. I'm hearing a woman's voice. Who is that? I heard a man's voice. Lucy, ask ask it um, uh, to uh, say its name. Tell me your name. It's saying a lot of words. I can't make it out. How many are there? How many are talking? What was that? I don't know. I heard a woman's voice say hello. Hello. Who is the woman that's speaking? Can you identify yourself? Give me a name. Hello. Can you speak with us? Can you tell us? Ask uh, for Jeffrey and then ask what was the name of his first victim. Jeffrey, talk to me. What was say his name full name. Say his victim? full name when you talk to him. Jeffrey Dahmer. Who was your first victim? Jeffrey Dahmer. Are you there? Jake? Who said Jake? Say it again, please. Jeffrey Dahmer, are you there? I keep hearing a man's voice, a low voice. Who are you? All right, Lucy, let's assume that Jeffrey is there. Let's just assume and see if we can go a little bit further in the conversation. Um, ask him how old he was when he first started to feel like murdering people. Jeffrey Dahmer, how old were you when you first felt the urge to kill? Jeffrey, tell me about your dog. What was your dog's name?
Jeffrey. Tell me about your apartment. Where was it? Did it say no walking or no? No? Jeffrey, I'm in Chicago. You've been to Chicago? Tell me you've been to Chicago. Sounds like somebody said West. Ask them to say their name. Can you tell me your name? Anyone that's able to speak, tell me your name. I'm speaking to the woman that's trying to speak. Who are you, dear? I heard a male voice say, yeah. The woman who's trying to speak, do you have a message? We're listening. Talk to us. Lucy, since Somebody it's the anniversary, that's, that's it. Since it's the anniversary today, January 16th, see if you can call out to James Docksetter and ask him how old was he when he was killed. Jamie, Jamie Docksetter. Today is January 16th. It's the day that you left us. How old was he when you left us? I just heard a click in my room. Jamie, what's your mother's name? Jamie Baxter, you had a favorite Bible quote. Can you tell us that Bible quote? Jamie, your mother said that this was your favorite Bible quote. 
forgive them, Father, for they not know what they do. Jamie Doxeter, have you forgiven Jeffrey? I heard no. Did you hear that? Yeah. Jamie, tell us what you're feeling. Are you okay? Did he say no? No. Ask him where Jamie, is he right now? Jimmy Doxeter, where are you? Can you describe it? You? Did you say by you? By you? Jimmy, are you near me? Jamie, I'm Native American also. What tribe are you? Who is the man that keeps speaking in the background? Who are you? Ask him to say his name. Say your name. Did you say Jeff? Somebody said Jeffrey. Okay. So is that Jeffrey? Jeffrey, is that you? Is that Jeffrey Donner? Say yes or no. Ask him if it is if it's really Jeffrey Dahmer, what's the name of the high school that he went to? If this is Jeffrey Dahmer that we're speaking to, what high school did you go to? Ask him again. Jeffrey, if you are really Jeffrey Dahmer, what high school did you go to? Who is there? How many people are there? What did he say? I thought I heard him say one right after you said the question.
Someone keeps saying Jeffrey. Who is that? Ask him why did he kill the victim. Jeffrey, why did you kill these people? Why did you kill these men? Mother? Father. Oh, father? Sound like father. I thought it sounded like mother. Tell me again, why did you kill these people? Did they have something to do with your father or mother? I'm still not convinced that it's Jeffrey, but let's see if we get a response to this question. Ask him what kind of factory did he work at? Jeffrey Dahmer, what kind of factory did you work at? Ask it again. Jeffrey Dahmer, what kind of factory did you work at? Hello. Who are you? Give me a name. Ask him if Ask Jeffrey Dahmer if he's in hell right now. Jeffrey Dahmer, are you in hell? Are you in hell? What did it say? It said how. It did say how? It said how. And I just got chills. Trina in chat said that she heard something sounded like Richard, and Richard is the name of his fourth victim, right after Gene. Richard Guerrero. Are you there? Can you speak with us? Hello? 
Did you say no? No. Richard Guerrero, is something stopping you from speaking to us? Who is that? It was a male voice. Anthony Sears. Raymond Smith. Ernest Miller. Did I hear somebody say shut up? Sounds like it. Who's telling you to shut up? Yeah. Who's telling me to shut up? Telling me to shut up. You don't want to hear the names of the victims? I heard we are. Very low male voice. Who is we? Tell me who you are. Did it say Chuck Toe? No. I don't know what it said, but it said something. I thought it said Chuck Toe, which is a Native American tribe. Okay. Who's telling me to be quiet? Ruthie in chat has a question, Lucy. Jeffrey, where did you come from originally? Tell us where you came from. Ask him again what factory he worked at. Jeffrey Dahmer, what factory did you work at? Tell me. Shut up. I keep hearing shut up. Why do you want me to shut up? Uh, 
I'll shut up if you talk. Tell me something. Where are you at? What it's like? Just swearing at me. Ask who else is there with you in the room. Who's in the room with me? I can hear you all. Who's here? I heard a woman's voice. I don't know I don't know what she said. Lucy, ask whoever is there with you or if there's one spirit that wants to come and visit me in New York, tell them to come and visit me here and to uh, come to this red circle that's on my my desk right now. Okay. Anyone that's here with me, I want you to go to New York. I want you to go where Anthony is. And there's a red circle that you can touch. Touch that red circle. If they can hear my voice, come to my voice. The sound of my voice, follow it. Can you go to Anthony? Can you go to the sound of his voice? Keep asking questions, Lucy. I need to talk to one of you. I hear several. Is one of you the leader? Sorry. Keep hearing sorry. Why are you sorry? Is that Jeffrey saying that he's sorry? Jeffrey, are you sorry? Say sorry again. In my bed. What was that? Somebody said my bed. To the woman that's there, tell me what you see. There's a very low, there was a very low voice there that said three words.
Let the woman speak. Ask if that's the woman that's in your house, Lucy. To the woman there, are you the woman that stays in my home? Not me? Not you? Is that what they said? Yeah. Am I speaking to anyone that stays in this building? I've heard you. Now's your chance to talk to me. Me? I heard me. Okay, me. Do you have a name? Why do you stay here? Ask if Jeffrey Dahmer is still there. Jeffrey Dahmer, are you still here? Harriet said she heard help you. To the person who is in this building, you're here to help me? Are you still there? See if you can relate to James Dockstetter again. Jamie. Jamie Dockstetter, can you hear my voice? Talk to me, honey. Tell me where you are. The devil. Is that what I said? I thought it said don't. Oh, it's a devil. Jamie. Is that you who said devil? Yeah. 
Ask who's, who's the devil. devil? Said it again. Who's saying this? Who said devil? Are you near the devil? Is the devil real? the devil. All right. Is the devil near? Are they describing Jeffrey Dahmer as the devil? Is Jeffrey Dahmer the devil? Are there any angels? about the devil. Who's talking about the devil? And who's me? Can I say pray? You want us to pray for you? Someone did say no. They don't need help? Yeah. Ask Jeffrey Dahmer if he's gonna he wants to kill again. Jeffrey Dahmer, do you want to kill again? Is that yes? yes? Is that what he said, yes? Yes. So, Jeffrey, you want to kill again. Why? Devil. Ask him who does he want to kill. Jeffrey Palmer, who do you want to kill? Don't you want to go to heaven? No. He said no. No. Devil. That's the woman's voice, right? Mm Mm-hmm.
Are you happy? Can you help? Ask them if there really is a heaven. Is there really a heaven? Somebody said yes. Yeah, I heard that. Thank you for that. Did it say devil again? It keeps saying devil. <coughs> Why do you keep saying devil? Did I just try to say got you? Yeah. Tell me what the devil's real name is. Tell me who you are. I don't know. I heard a very low toned voice say, I don't know. Ask them if they know what my name is or what your name is. What is my name? No, it's not devil. <laughs> devil again. What is my name? What is his name? The man that's in New York. What is his name? The devil. <laughs> Tell us our name. If you can hear us from Sia, tell us our name.
Jeffrey Dahmer, this is your chance to say something. Say it. Tell us what you want us to know. I want. What do you want? You want to kill again? Boy, what do you want? Can you say God? If Jeffrey Dahmer is still there, ask him where he did he bury his first victim. Jeffrey Dahmer. If you're still there, where did you bury your first victim? Did it say house? Did it? Yeah. What did it say? Eaten. Was the victim eaten? When did you first eat human flesh? Like. Nothing I heard. Tell me, what does it taste like?
ask know. Jeffrey, ask Jeffrey Dahmer what, what he did with the pictures. What did he do after he took pictures of his victims? Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, you took pictures of your victims. What did you do with them? Why did you take pictures? Tell me, Jeffrey, what did you do with the pictures? Ask him, what did he do to himself with the pictures? Jeffrey, what did you do to yourself with the pictures? Jeffrey, did you have sex with your victim? Did you have sex with your victims? Lucy, ask yeah. him if he forgives Tracy Edwards for getting him in trouble. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Dahmer, do you forgive Tracy Edwards for getting you busted? Again. Jeffrey Dahmer, do you forgive Tracy Edwards for getting you in trouble? I heard help me. Who needs help? I have a candle here on my desk. Can you put it out? Show me what you can do.
Okay, anyone who's there, tell me what you're feeling right now. Do you need help? All right, tell tell Jeffrey and James and any of the other spirits there that uh, we're going to leave them now and that you're going to say goodbye if they could say goodbye back to us. Okay. Jeffrey Dahmer, Jamie, any of the spirits that are there, we're going to leave you now. Can you say goodbye? Could help again. We're going to say goodbye. Can you say goodbye? Who needs help? Okay, I'm going to say goodbye. Well, wow, that was pretty awesome. There was a lot that was coming through. Make sure you shut the other phone off, Lucy. It's off. Okay. Recorder's, recorder's still going, so if anything is residual, anything is still there, hopefully we can catch it. Um, and, wow. And I've got my digital recorder here, too, just in case anything came through on my side. I'm cold. Yeah, I got, I'm got. i cold, too. I'm actually cold myself. I don't know if anybody who's listening is feeling cold, um, but I started to feel this towards the end, and that's why I wanted to sort of end the session and uh, say goodbye for now. Um, but uh, I thought it was pretty amazing. Devil came up a lot. Sorry came up a lot. Help me came up a lot. There's some troubled souls uh, that we were talking to tonight, and it was pretty disturbing to hear a lot of that. Um, people were in chat were saying that they heard uh, cursing a lot. Fu came up many many times. Um, shit or uh, it was shut up was a lot as well. So um, very angry spirits. Very. Um, seems to be attached or, or still feeling attached to something. So it's pretty pretty freaky night. Well, they said, when I asked what my name was, they said it was Devil. <laughs> well, that is your name. That's your nickname. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, before we go any further, do you want to do the binding um, yes. saying? We just want to make yes. sure that whatever has come through does not continue in in our lives or in your lives. So Lucy is going to recite a uh, a binding saying. Okay. God bless every corner of the homes of everyone listening and participating. May peace dwell within. Protect all that come and go, whether friend or kin. Bless every door and window pane, every ceiling and wall. Bless every closet, nook and cranny, crawl space, or basement. Bless it all. Bless the roof and the ground surrounding with your protective love and light. Hold us in your loving care every second of every day, in every way from early morning into sheltered night. 
Let all be in your complete perfection as you intend it. Release all negativity into your confirmed light that is extended. We thank you and expect your miraculous intervention, clearing all with purification, love, peace, and joy as divinely as intended. Amen. Okay. Um, pretty intense ghost box session. Uh, I wasn't sure what to expect for tonight since this is our first one that we've ever really done, uh, you know, in our own towns, in our own location. And uh, I may say that it was um, pretty pretty successful. Now, just so that, and I mentioned this before, just so that everybody's aware, the show automatically archives. So whatever link that you clicked on to get in to listen to us live tonight, you can hold on to that link and click it again anytime and listen to the show as many times as you want. You can rewind it, fast forward, do whatever you'd like, pause it, um, cut it up, chop it up, put it into whatever to clean it up, and uh, see if you can listen in even further uh, and catch anything that we may have missed. Uh, we're going to try and do that this weekend and see if we come up with anything as well. So your help would be greatly appreciated. But I did want to say thank you all for everybody who is listening and those of you who are in chat who are listening as well and typing in all the things that you were seeing or you were hearing. Well, I don't know if you were seeing anything, but everything that you were hearing and, and things that you were feeling, uh, we do love you guys and appreciate you for, you for for putting that out there for us and helping us along with this Ghost Box session. I thought it was really successful and uh, who knows, maybe we'll do this once a month. It'll be exciting. Yeah, it would be interesting. Um, I really didn't know what to expect, but there was a lot going on. I mean, there's certain voices, like Trina mentioned, there's a lot of voices that were the same that were coming through. So I'm curious to know, is it the spirits that are in this building. I know that there's a lot. There's one in particular that always tries to get my attention, and it's usually when we're doing the show. Um, I really, really want to listen to this recorder. I want to go back through and listen and see what we can pick up, but I think this was great. I mean, I, I, I'm happy with it. I mean, everything right now, I did feel a little bit, but it didn't feel like it was, like, right on me which is mm -hmm. a good thing, but I definitely... I didn't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't think, you know, we kept hearing the word devil. I honestly don't think that the devil was here, so I don't want anybody to, to be afraid because the uh, other options are there, and this has happened many times before, that spirits tend to utilize words that try and scare us, and they could be sort of, you know, the, the nasty, annoying, gnat-like type of spirits that try and persuade you and try and frighten you and utilize words and phrases to make it seem as though it is more demonic than, than it is. And so uh, I, I don't think the devil was, was with us tonight, um, although, you know, who knows. But I don't, think, I don't think it was. I think it was just one of those spirits or many of those spirits that just like to frighten people uh, because we kept hearing that. And uh, what was interesting is we kept hearing that one woman's voice who was um, – there were two – undertoned voices there was a male voice and there was a woman's voice that was it seemed as though they were very far away but they were very smooth and i think somebody in chat had mentioned it was a i think it was trina that had said that it was a very smooth voice that would pan over the frequencies and it was the the male and the female that would do that and when i hear that it's sort of like a lower tone uh very distant but it was much clearer than what you you were actually hearing and that's what I focus on, and those were the voices that I tried to, to point on and pinpoint on uh, and try and listen to and see if I could catch again. Because to me, those are the truer voices. The other stuff, obviously, you get the interference of radio waves. But I think those were the truer voices, and that was pretty interesting. Now, I really want to go over this recorder. I really do. I mean, it's this, is, this was amazing. I mean, again... Um, I'm a fan of the SD7. I, I said it before. I know there are people out there that don't seem to think that it's all that, but I really do. I'm I'm happy with it. All I'm right. Glad so it. I'm glad too. Thank you, thank you, Lucy, for doing that, and thank you all for uh, participating tonight in the Ghost Box sessions. Hopefully, we'll 
we'll be able to do this maybe once a month. But uh, I want to get into the rest of what we do and announce what we're going to be doing for next week's show. So take a listen to what Lucy has to say. Okay, we're, let's really quickly, we're going to go to the Paranormal Review Radio Fan of the Week. This week it is Adam Sunkel of New Albany, Ohio. He likes Led Zeppelin, Anna Bay, The Depth Within, Finding Bigfoot, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, Fact or Fake, Call of Duty, Reptiles, Snakes, and of course he likes Paranormal Review Radio. Adam messaged us to tell us that he is a big fan of the show. Congratulations, Adam, and thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you, Adam. Appreciate uh, all the great words, kind words that you've sent us. And don't forget, if you want to be a Paranormal Review Radio Fan of the Week, all you got to do is just like us on Facebook or subscribe to us on YouTube at Paranormal Review Radio. Well, connections with the other side, they happen all the time. You don't have to be in a well-known haunted location. I think we proved that tonight. The spirits move around in our world at will, and some of them stay anchored in one spot. But they have messages, and they may be trying to have just one person hear what they're trying to say. Um, Just remember, when you do this kind of stuff, before you connect with the other side, make sure you're firmly connected to this side. Use protection and keep good intentions. It's not a game, and it should not be approached with uh, with just for the thrill of it. Have a sense of purpose. Again, thank you to everybody who's listening. It was an interesting experiment, and we're going to try it again. So... We did use some well-known tools to communicate tonight. We left one out, a tool that we've discussed at length and have still have so many questions about, the Ouija board. Karen A. Dahlman has been working in the arena of spirit communication via the Ouija board for over 40 years. She is an author, licensed therapist, business owner, and a consultant, and a leading expert Ouijaologist. She's written a book called Spirits of Ouija, Four decades of communication. In her book, she chronicles the messages she has received while using the board. These are messages of inspiration, healing, creativity, closure, and there are messages from loved ones as well as the wisdom of the ages. Can we discover the true nature of the board? Karen will be joining us next Friday night as we look once again at the tool no one can seem to agree on, the one and only Ouija board. Thank you to everyone who listens here at home and around the world. You guys are all amazing. Thank you, Anthony, for being captain of this crazy train. So until next week, para peeps, keep communicating and have a paranormal week. Good night. Good night, everybody. Paranormal Review Radio.